Hey everyone, it's Zueb Khan here and I'm a front-end engineer. This video is part 2 of the create a YouTube style sidebar in Angular with Angular material series and where we create a sidebar like this. And in this part, we are going to do the collapse state of the sidebar in this mode. So let's get started. Okay, so let's see where we were before. So if you look on ng serve open. So this is where we were, where we left in the previous part. So we had our menu items uh, pretty good and they looked quite nice, but we couldn't collapse our menu yet. So let's add that, right? So first of all, we need to store the state of the collapsed mode of the sidebar. So how do we do that? Now for um, storing the state, local component level state, the best option to use in Angular 16 is to use signals. So what we're going to do is that we're going to go back to our app component and we're going to store a signal here. So we're going to say collapsed. This will be a new signal and this signal is going to be the initial value is going to be false. Okay. Now the button that we have here is going to just toggle this signal. So let's do that here in the click event handler. We are going to do collapsed dot set and then we're just going to use the value of the collapsed and just going to use the false operator here so that if it is true, it will become false. If it is false, it will become true. Okay. What needs to happen when the sidebar is collapsed? Now on, on this level, what, what we need to do is to change the mat side navs width. Like we have a constant width here, but we need to change it to a specific width based on the collapse state. So what we're going to do is we're going to use another feature of signals and that is the computed. So we're going to say that's give me the side nav width. Now this will be a computed. This will be computed from the collapse signal itself. So if for example, it is collapsed, we are going to give a width of 65 pixels. And if it is not collapsed, we are going to revert back to the width that we had previously. This will be the expanded width. So now we can just use the side nav width in place of this style dot width here. So we can do side nav width and use the parenthesis because it is a signal as well. Now, whenever the collapse state changes, this signal is going to update itself and we can just see here right now. Let's test this out now. And now when we click on this, you can see that the width changes. Great. But one thing we also need to test out is that what if, for example, we write hello here and you can see the content is here. Now, when we click on this, you can see the content doesn't change. And why is that? Now, that is because the side nav container or the side nav content basically adds a margin left class as well to this. So let's also add a margin left style here and we'll use the same computed that we have. It will have a margin of the same amount. So let's try this out now. And now when we click on this, you can see the content also shifts. Great. So this works. Okay. So the initial problem, but obviously is that the content inside of the sidebar doesn't change that much. So let's go in our side nav, custom side nav, and then make the changes there. Uh, let's send the input of the collapse state so that we can know what the state of the side nav is so that we can adjust the content accordingly. Now we're going to send the value of the signal like this. Now this says that the input is not there. So we are just going to go inside of it and add the input here. So let's add an input here. This is going to be called collapsed. Now, since we want to make this reactive as well, this input reactive as well, we can actually create a signal for this as well. So we're going to call this signal as side nav collapsed this will be a signal and going to be false initially first of all let's import this input then we're going to use a setter here okay and the value here would be the boolean which we get and then we're just going to set the value of this signal to this value great now what do we need to do to adjust this content inside of this so the first thing obviously we need to do is to adjust the image width and height because it needs to be smaller here. So how do we do that? Now let's use the power of signals again. So let's create a computed here, which we're going to call as profile pick size. Now this is going to be a computed. And since we have our input of the collapse state in the form of a signal, we can easily use that here. So we can do if this dot side nav collapsed, if it is collapsed, then we want a very small width and height, this small width and height will be 32. But if it is expanded, then we are just going to revert to the same width and height that we have right now, which is 100. Okay. Now we can put this profile pick size in place of the width and height here. Okay. And the height, the same. Now you can see the benefits of this here. So whenever the collapsed signal changes or the input of this component changes, this signal is going to, or this computed is going to get calculated again and the image changes its state or the image changes its width and height. So all of this happens automatically or reactively. We don't need to add any extra handling for this. Great. So let's test this out. Now when we do this, you can see that this reduces to a nice small height and then goes back to that big height when it needs to. But what do we do with this? So this is the header text. Now let's see what we, what we can do with the header text. Now for the header text, we're going to add a custom class when the 
side nav is collapsed. So let's add a custom class here and we are going to call that custom class as hide header text okay and we're going to just give the opacity of the header text as zero this should hide that nicely so how do we add a custom class in angular so we can just use class dot hide header text is equals to what was our signal here it was side nav collapse so if it is collapsed then we can hide the header text fine this seems to be good let's try this out and you can see that we don't see the header text here but there's also another problem the header text is hidden the opacity is zero but the height still remains so let's also add another style to it and we are going to call this height zero zero pixels okay let's try this out and you can see now the height also reduces now you could also have used ngif and or another way for example the hidden attribute but i've used this class because we need to animate this stuff later on so that is going to make this animation really easy by using CSS transitions instead of using the angular animations which are a bit difficult to set up. Okay, so we have adjusted this but one thing is still left and our label is it's not showing here but it's still present which we don't want in our collapse state. So let's also hide those and for hiding those we can easily use the ngf so we are just going to add an ngf here for this span here this would be ngf and if it's not collapsed then it's going to show all right great now when we see it we see that everything works fine great so we have added our collapse state now next let's also add the routing to our app so that our content can be selected and it shows that nice selected icons that is present in the youtube sidebar as well okay now how do we add the roots to our application so we created the application with the routing enabled so we already have the app.roots file here but le first let's create the components or the pages that would correspond to those roots so to do those we are going to just create ng g c which is for component and we're going to put these in the pages folder so the first one will be the dashboard one obviously then we have the content one then we have the analytics one then we have the comments so four pages for four menu items and now let's go back to our app.roots and let's see what the roots are so there are no roots right now but let's first add the first root here so, so the first root will be our base root with the path empty now we have to have a path match option here as well because otherwise it's going to match the whole path instead of this specific empty root so we are going to redirect this to our dashboard so the initial root will be the dashboard root and when we don't have any root selected it's going to go automatically to the dashboard root okay now for the rest of the roots we can just copy the roots that i already have here with me and we can then import all of these components that we just added okay great so you can see that the dashboard root is loaded but we have our hello as well we need to remove this hello let's remove this hello which we were just using for testing and you can see we have that dashboard thing now quickly i also want to just convert this to a heading of dashboard so that it is looks more like a page the same thing we can do with our other so we can do this content in analytics we can do this analytics and then comments we can do the same thing great okay so now we can see that the dashboard is open but all of the other routes don't work now that is because we haven't added those routes in our menu items yet so let's go to our side nav again and let's add the router module here because we need to use the router link and in our mat list item we are going to use the router link here and we're going to use the route item of our menu items if you remember it from here you can see all of the routes are here all right so let's test this out great now when we click on this it goes into dashboard when you click on content it goes into analytics then comments great and it works in the collapse state as well okay but one thing you can see that it doesn't show us which menu item is selected here so there's no visual indication of which menu item is selected now we want to add that next and to add that we have a property of the mat list item which is called activated and this um, property when when it is true that means that this is going to be shown in the primary color so that we know that this menu item has been selected or this root has been selected so how do we set it up though now so to do that what we do is actually we use a directive which is provided by angular this is called the router link active directive so let's add that router link active directive to our mat list item here now this is available to all items which have the router link directive so let's see we can add router link active here now usually this is assigned to a class that means that class is going to be added to the menu item when the router link is active or that specific route is selected here but we don't need it right now so we're just gonna um, exclude it at this point but of course we need to set the activated mode of this menu item now how do we access the router link active though here we can't access this directly so how do we get that in the template what we can do is we can create a template variable 
and this is going to export the router link active directive now we can access the router link active directive and this directive has a property called is active okay now this is active will be true only when this specific route is currently active so when the dashboard is active it's going to have the router link active of this menu item as true so this is exactly what we want so let's try and see how this look great and now you can see that primary color which is blue in our case uh, show up when the menu is activated here the root is activated here so when we click on content for example you can see the content root is active and this is selected and analytics and comments it works the same and when we minimize this or collapse this you can see the state remains so we know exactly where we are in our app now the great thing about this is that it also remembers this so if you for example go here manually like we go to the dashboard manually here you can see the dashboard is selected already again so it's not that the state is only maintained within the app and when the app refreshes it the state vanishes the root state basically it flows from the url itself and the ui then just flows from okay so if you go on comments here and tap enter we can see that it goes into comments great so this works as we want so the routing has been set up now and we can now tell which of the route is active so our sidebar is coming along pretty nicely now in the next last part we are going to add all of the animations and some visual indicators to closely match the youtube sidebar and so that we can get a nice visual feel when the user uses our sidebar okay so i'll see you in the next video if you haven't subscribed please subscribe to the channel so that you can get notified of that video thanks for watching